I, pre- I do appreciate how all of you manage to be these like international individuals, you know? Like y'all care about things that are happening in the world and you consume all this media that is not yours. You don't, you don't have to if you don't want to, right? Like I know that we're right there and we're very loud about it, but <laughs> if you wanted to put the Sony XM4s on, you could, you know? But y'all keep up with your politics and our politics. We don't even do that. <laughs> it's pretty wild. Like I'm sure y'all have seen Mitch McConnell freezing up. (laughs) If you don't know who Mitch McConnell is, he is the leader of the Republican Party in the States. He's the full-time leader of the Republicans in the Senate, and he's a part-time mime. And I know you're wondering, you're like, how is this happening? We're wondering the same thing. How is this happening? How is this, this is crazy. He's not, he's not by himself. Biden's hella old. Trump is hella old. You know, Diane Feinstein's hella old. We just keep letting older and older people stay in power. And we don't even really know why. I think that mainly there's something to be said for like how fearful Americans are and so if there's anyone that can offer us Any form of stability we will take it from them, you know, and that's what you get you get people who serve 19 terms and everything Came in the 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 fact that this man froze while they were asking if he was gonna run for (laughs) re-election I think that was God answering for him. That's just (laughs) That's crazy. If you didn't see the video, basically they're like, would you be running for re-election? And then he went, huh. (laughs) He looked, for a split second, he looked just like Jim from The Office. He was like. (laughs) And then his aide walked up and they were like, did you hear him? It's like, hearing's not the problem, (laughs) ma'am. No. And there are some people that are like, oh, leave him alone. He's an old man. It's like, all right, well, just because you're old doesn't, being old isn't a virtue. (laughs) He was shitty all the way up until then, so. (laughs) Do you know what I mean? And look, I hope. (laughs) I. How do I word this? <laughs> I hope he's able to maintain his health as well as the first responders from 9-11 that he voted against funding are able to maintain theirs. You know, like, I think that... It's weird. It's, it's, it's an odd thing. It's every time he freezes, he looks like <laughs> he's look. He looks like he's seeing. <laughs> it looks like he's seeing all the black people he ever tried to stop from voting. Like it's like, <laughs> like they're just in the room with him. He's like, huh. <laughs> that is a lot. <laughs> Now, I know you're wondering, how, how did this happen? How did we get here? How do we, how, how do we end up staying here? Because he's not the only one. It's not, I'm not even picking on Republicans, really. There's old Democrats, there's Democrats that you're like, why are, how is this the person? Surely someone else believes what they believe and is like able. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Surely, right? And I don't, I don't think that the U.S. is just a fearful country. I think that we also, we have this reputation. They, they talk about how baseball is the great American pastime, but it's not. It isn't. 
the great American pastime is arguing. <laughs> we love to argue so much, a lot of people want to redo the Civil War. Like, that's, <laughs> that's how much we love to argue. And, it, and it, it's not about the candidate. There's nothing so special about McConnell. There's nothing so special about Biden or Trump that they keep being in the position that they're in. It's that we like to argue so much that we do not pay attention until it's too late, right? You, it doesn't matter, Biden, Trump, whatever. Throw, throw all that stuff out of there. You could put one party's candidate as a tomato and one party's candidate as a potato and we'll still have it out. <laughs> as dumb as that is, we would still be like, well, I do like potatoes though. <laughs> But we don't know. We, we're very unsure as, as a group of people, you know? You watch the... I'm sure it's terrifying for y'all, because y'all are, <laughs> are so close. Like, like, this... You as Canadians must feel how I felt when I live next door to a drug dealer. <laughs> had nothing to do with me. It was none of my business, but I don't know. You'd hear stuff through the wall, and you're like, am I in danger? <laughs> you know? Like, you even watch from afar the, the shootings that we have, the school shootings that we have. It's, it's genuinely terrifying. It's terrifying for us, you know? And so many of them happen that there, there's no keeping up. Like just within, what, a week of each other, there was a shooting, there was a hate crime, and then there was a shooting that, uh, at a school. And you wonder, like, how is this sustainable? Is it possible for it to be sustainable? You know? You take a country that has this much crippling student loan debt and you carpet bomb it with a bunch of school shootings, it's no wonder we don't like to read. <laughs> Shit feels dangerous. <laughs> no. That's my thing, it's like, I think it's gonna change how future generations even talk about school because there's just so many. It's not this like uncommon occurrence. And like, they don't all make international news because thank God not 13 kids aren't dying every time, but it's, you know, it is happening. It makes me wonder if 30 years from now, there's gonna be a kid who turns to another kid. It's like, hey, him over there, he cold blooded, got ice in his veins. Be like, what? Him? Yeah, him. What'd he do? It's like, he got a PhD. <laughs> <laughs> he went to school every day. <laughs> he doesn't give a fuck. <laughs> Been trying, been trying to make more friends. <laughs> this is the thing. When you, when you are young and you are, have a lot of friends, you think that you're good at making friends, but there's a chance that you're not. There's a chance that these friends are just from convenience and proximity, right? Because then when you get older, when you become an adult, you see how hard it is to make friends, you know? It's hard, whether you're trying to date someone or make a friend, it's incredibly difficult to walk up to someone and make something out of thin air. Because that's what you're doing when you're building relationships. And, and we're not always receptive to it, you know? We think that we're good at making friends, we think we want more friends, but sometimes it's not the day, I got too much on my mind. Or don't talk to me here, or it's impossible to know. You know? Like if somebody rolled up to you right now like, damn man, I like your glasses, I like your hat. What you doing later? You'd be like, get the fuck away from me. 
I don't know if it's drugs you're taking or drugs you need to be taking, but <laughs> get away from me. <laughs> I've been trying to make friends. I've been trying to make friends at the gym. Because that way I'll have a, a, a spotter, so I won't, I won't gym alone. If you don't know what a spotter is, a spotter is a friend who lets you believe in yourself too much. <laughs> You go to the gym together and you're like, I think I could push 300. And he's like, we'll see. <laughs> so I did it. I made a friend at the gym. I was, uh, I was working out and I saw this guy and he, he basically was, uh, was on the machine that I needed. So I was sort of waiting around. And have you ever met someone? Have you ever met someone that has been to so much jail. <laughs> They've been to so much jail that they are from jail. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Like, like, you might be from Toronto, right? You might be from Vancouver. This man was from jail, okay? <laughs> And you know he was from jail because he was like working out and he was barking in between reps. Like he was like, oh, 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 oh. It's like, okay. And he noticed me sort of lurking around waiting for him to be done on the machine and he saw me and he was like, you try to get on this one? I was like, oh, maybe. Uh, if, you, if, you, if, if that's okay with you. And he's like, let's take turns. I'm like, okay, okay, cool, cool, cool. And so, so we did, we took turns, and I did my little like, huh, 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 huh. And he did his like, oh, 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 yeah. And then for whatever reason, we just kept working out together. I was like, what workout are you doing? And he told me, and so I just, we, we took turns for the rest of the time that we were at the gym, and we decided to be gym buddies. And I appreciate this about him. I really do appreciate this. That, that he did this, that he said this to me, you know, because we exchanged numbers and everything. And before I was about to leave, he was like, look, I got something to tell you. And I was like, oh, what, you know, what is it? And he was like, I did a little time. Have you ever had someone tell you something that they thought was a secret? <laughs> but was so painfully obvious, you had to act surprised to not feel rude. So then he said, I do a little time. I was like, oh, um, time where? Uh, Uh, time like abroad? <laughs> and he was like, no, the parent. And I was like, oh, yep, 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 fair enough. Okay, I got you. And so we decided to be workout buddies. And next time that we're supposed to meet up, I was, I was late because I got off work late. So now I was heading there. And I'm, I'm excited to see my new friend, my new gym buddy, my new spotter. And as soon as I see him, I'm thinking he's going to have a smile on his face too. This man is pissed, right? I walk up. He's like, where the fuck was you? Okay. I, I already started working out. I already did chest. I already did back. I already did stomachs. I was like, do you mean abs? And he's like, that's why I said nigga's stomachs. I was like, yep, you're right. Apples and oranges. Fair enough. And so, you know, we started working out and, and it occurred to me that like, if, I'm, if, if I really want a friend, the other thing that we do that stops people from being close to us is we like, have little departments and categories for every friend. And sometimes we try to keep them there. Specifically, oh, I want you there. 
this is as far as I want the friendship to go. And then we wonder why we don't have anybody close to us. Because we didn't give at least everyone the chance to maybe be that close person to us. So I was like, if I'm going to be friends with this dude, I got to be his real friend. Not just a gym buddy. His real friend. Right? Because I, I, this is just a personal thing. I'm not trying to put this on anybody. But I genuinely believe that if someone does a crime and they go to jail and then they get out, it should be done. They paid their debt. And now it's time to move on, or else what re-ingratiates them back into society? Why change at all? You know what I mean? So I'm, I'm trying to do my best to like be his real friend. So I invited him to brunch. <laughs> and Saturday comes, right? And he shows up to the brunch spot that I picked out that I told him to come to with the biggest brown bag I've ever seen <laughs> in my entire, I didn't even know they made brown bags this big. It was a brown bag, might as well have been a garbage bag. This was crazy big and it had a huge tubbleware of lasagna in it. And I was like, oh, what, why did you bring that? And he's like, it's brunch, isn't it? And I was like, yep. But that's why we're here. That's why we're here at the brunch re restaurant. Like you didn't have to bring any brunch with you because all the brunch is inside. I didn't know. And he's like, "That's not what you said." I'm like, "I understand. I didn't tell you not to bring anything. That's my bad. I didn't. I didn't realize I needed to say, don't bring. All the brunch will be inside when we when we get there.'" And he's like, "But it's brunch." I was like, "Oh, yeah. You keep saying that, and I." <laughs> Don't know what you mean. He's like, it's brunch. I brought my lunch. <laughs> I was like, oh, this dude went to jail before brunch was invented. Okay. <laughs> cool, cool. But my man loves $13 mimosas. <laughs> I know because I was paying. After he finished one, he's like, let's get another one. I was like, well, let's implies both, but yeah, whatever. Okay. <laughs> but it's great. It's a great friendship to have because honestly, this dude, I, I, can't, I can't say this like as a blanket statement, but I, I will say if it's possible, you know, one of the things I think that makes society better and would, would, would help and re-ingratiating these, these people back into society is if you had, if everybody had a friend who had been to jail, because I will say this, a friend who's been to jail knows exactly when to leave a party. <laughs> <laughs> I went to a party this dude invited me to. I'm there for 12 minutes. And he's like, we need to get out of here. And I was like, oh, okay. And the next day I saw that party on the news. <laughs> I was like, wow, he could smell it coming. <laughs> <laughs>